I have made 86 videos, I have 55,000 subscribers, and over two and a half million views. And even after all of that, I still struggle with it. I'm back, I'm back with a new video. And this is what I brought, but these. And yeah, you paint it on top of this. I have to figure out how to turn on this new microphone. I had to reshoot this video five times, maybe six. So then I said to myself, who are you to even be making a video about how to make videos? And then I realized that I'm the perfect person to share how to make, ugh. See, the words, they don't, they don't roll out. So I definitely have some tips and tricks to share with you, and that is what I'm gonna do now, so let's get into it. My very first tip is you wanna get in the camera zone. The camera zone, is the place where you feel comfortable, where you feel loose, where you feel like you can just say anything and do anything and you can connect and you're just going with it and all of the self-consciousness is kind of like fallen away. It's a transition. I don't just go from regular everyday life mode into camera mode. I need to warm up. It's like exercising. So you wanna allow yourself plenty of time because you learn by doing it. Here is an example of me in the zone and not in the zone, and you can see the difference. You take your mirror and you wanna work over the whole mirror at one time. You're gonna take your biggest shells and you're gonna glue them here, 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 and here. And all I could do is just think about that instead of what I was supposed to say. So today I remembered, and I thought I would tell you guys, how to make a seashell mirror. See, my next tip is to enjoy it. The camera actually conveys how you're feeling on the inside and what you're thinking. So if you're thinking, I don't like this, I feel uncomfortable, I can't wait for this to be over, this makes me feel really weird, then the people who are watching you are gonna be thinking those same things. So instead, if you're thinking, I love this, this is great, I can't wait to share this information with you, then most likely, when people watch you, that is what they will be thinking, instead of thinking, I'm uncomfortable too, and I want to get off this video as soon as possible. Here are some examples of me being really excited on camera. I found this in the dumpster right here. It's a big giant shipping crate and we're gonna recycle it. We're gonna repurpose it. That whole crate is gonna get covered in writ dye. We're gonna use it like paint. I go up to the guy and I said, how much are all your sticks? And he goes, are you gonna buy all of them? And I said, yeah, I wanna buy them all if the price is right. All of these right here, two dollars. That's what he said. You never know what's gonna jump when you play it back on your computer. There was a piece of watermelon and I was planning on eating it for lunch and in the middle of filming the video, I looked at the watermelon and I thought, it might be funny if I ate the watermelon while painting this table. And I really liked the way it turned out and it ended up staying in the video. So allow yourself that freedom to try to experiment. If it doesn't work out, you can always delete it. And here is a shot of that. I gotta eat my breakfast before we get started. Might take a while. And my next tip is to be authentic. You just want to connect as a real person with your audience and let them know that they can trust you and that you're real and that you know what you're talking about or maybe you don't know what you're talking about. And something doesn't go well, I like to keep that in my videos. And here is an example of things not going well in my videos. The dresser's all done, but I don't like it. So I'm gonna use mint chips, sea glass, old 57, and prom dress and we're gonna see how that looks and if that doesn't work then I'll just give it to the goodwill. And then you need some needle felting and a chainsaw and it's super easy to make. Whoa! whoa. This is what I used for the first two years of making videos. I used my phone and this little thing right here this is called a Gorilla Grip. This costs $30 and your phone fits into it like this and then this thing wraps around. I like to put it on the front facing camera like this and that would help me to make the connection with a real person. I would see myself and that would be the friend that I would be talking to. Another tip that I like is 
to have the camera up really high. I like to do that because I'm in my 40s. I have actually one year left and I won't be able to even say that anymore. But if you hold the camera up high, then you look a little bit thinner and you look a little bit younger. And if you overexpose the video a little bit, then all the wrinkles kind of wash away. And so that's a helpful tip for anyone who is my age or beyond. Oh yeah, I do have one more tip. You want to have some superfluous footage that you can refer to like a safety net. If you watch my videos, you will see like this awkward dance scene that usually happens at the end of every video. And I do that for two reasons. One, I really enjoy doing it, but two, it's a great way to include any information that you may have left out in the video. So, as you see my video playing, there's usually a voiceover that's saying all the things that I forgot to squeeze into the video. And here is an example of that. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. If you have any tips or questions about being on camera, be sure and leave them in the comments below. And if you would like more tips, be sure and subscribe to debbiesdesigndiary.com. This is landscape mode. This is not. If you shoot your video with your phone this way, then you're going to get the big black bars on either side and your video is going to be a fraction of what it could be. Nobody wants the black bars.